All right, so apparently it's just normal for us to get a million Extreme Z Awakenings all at once now. And obviously, I'm not complaining about it. It's awesome. It's just something that's going to take some time to get used to. Anyways, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Extreme Z Awakening details for the AGL LR Goten and Trunks or Mighty Mask, as well as Tech Vegito, Int Vegito, the Tech Super Boo, uh, Int Vegeta, and finally the STR Goku. So six different Extreme Z Awakenings that are dropping on JP within the next, I believe, day and a half. And that's on top of a bunch of new Fusions Extreme Z Awakenings as well. So I'm pretty sure for this celebration, JP is going to be getting something like 15 to 20 Extreme Z Awakenings, which is absolutely insane. But uh, with that said, let's start with the unit that I'm sure most of you guys are the most interested in, and that would be the AGL LR Goten and Trunks. So before the Extreme Z Awakening, their leader skill is Super AGL type to keep plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 100%, or Extreme AGL type to keep plus 2, HP attack and defense plus 70%. Their 12 key super attack had a 50% chance to transform them into Fat Gotenks, or skinny go tanks, and for fat go tanks, it lowers own attack for one turn and causes colossal damage, and then skinny go tanks lowers attack and defense for one turn and causes colossal damage. And then for the uh, 18 key super, there was a 70% chance for Super Saiyan 1 go tanks and a 30% chance for Super Saiyan 3 go tanks. And for Super Saiyan 1 go tanks, it causes mega colossal damage and raises defense by 30% for one turn. And then for Super Saiyan 3 Go Tanks, causes Mega Colossal Damage and greatly raises attack and defense for one turn. Passive was key plus 3 to 9 randomly at the start of turn, and then attack plus 120% when performing a super attack. So, like a lot of other Go Tanks units, there was a lot of RNG involved in this unit. You know, for the 12k super, it was either skinny go tanks or fat go tanks, and then for the 18 key super, it was Super Saiyan 1 or Super Saiyan 3, and then even for the passive, it was between 3 to 9 uh, key at the start of turn. So you never really knew what you were getting from this unit. Now, with the Extreme Z Awakening, uh, that's still the case, but I would say less so. There's less variance in a way. So the uh, leader skill is Super AGL type to keep plus 4. HP attack and defense plus 120% or extreme AGL types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 90%. The 12k super attack is still a 50% chance for fat go tanks or skinny go tanks, but their effects are slightly different. So for fat go tanks, he actually raises defense by 30% for one turn and causes colossal damage. And then for the skinny go tanks, it lowers own defense by 30% for one turn and causes colossal damage. So of course you do want the fat go tanks over the skinny go tanks, and I do wish that they actually just got rid of this uh, defense buff for skinny go tanks, but um, it's still better than before, right? Before he lowered attack and defense, so now it's just lowering attack, or sorry, uh, now it's just lowering defense. Still negative, but not as negative, and when you get the fat go tanks, you're actually getting more defense as opposed to less defense. And then for the 18 key super, after the Extreme Z Awakening, I'm pretty sure everything stays the same. Uh, it does, yeah, so for, oh actually never mind, never mind. For the 18 key super, it's a 50% chance for Super Saiyan 1 go tanks or Super Saiyan 3 go tanks. So before it was 70% for Super Saiyan 1 and 30% for Super Saiyan 3, now it's even between the two and the effects are the same. So for Super Saiyan 1 Gotenks, it's Mega Colossal Damage and raises defense for one turn. And then Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, it's Mega Colossal Damage and greatly raises attack and defense for one turn. And then for their new passive, it is Key plus 5 to 10 randomly at the start of turn. Attack and defense plus 150% when performing a super attack. And then plus an additional attack plus 50% when performing an ultra super attack, medium chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, which is a 30% chance to dodge. So, uh, like I said, you know, there is a little bit less RNG. Obviously, it's still a very RNG dependent unit. 
but now you have a 50% chance for Super Saiyan 1 or Super Saiyan 3. And also their passive is much better in terms of the buffs you're going to be getting. Um, 5 to 10 key, and then a, a lot more attack and a lot more defense. I mean, before they had no defense at all, right? It was 120% attack, and that's it. Now they're getting 150% attack and defense, and also the additional 50% attack for an ultra super. So if you're getting an ultra super attack, this unit is going to be hitting extremely, extremely hard, guys. Like, I'm imagining... You know, anywhere between like 7 to maybe 10 million attack when you're at rainbow status, you know, fully maxed out links and all that good stuff. And uh, especially if you get the Super Saiyan 3 Go Tanks transformation, you're getting even more attack. So, yeah, they're going to be hitting really, really hard. And they're also going to be getting a good amount of defense. Maybe not like crazy defense. I mean, it's just 150% defense and nothing. Oh, actually, you know what? They're also raising defense, right, on their 18k super. So... If you combine that with the passive, then they should be quite tanky as well. The only issue I can see is that uh, they don't get anything before they super, right? So it looks like they are, yeah, no doubt a slot 2 or slot 3 unit. You don't want to put them in the first slot unless there's no attacks in that first slot before you get to attack, because otherwise they're going to get crushed, right? Because they get no defense before that. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. They get no buff before they super. But outside of that, it's a really good Extreme Z Awakening. Definitely a huge improvement for this unit that really needed that EZA. And, um, you know, it's a little bit basic, right? Like, they don't really do anything unique with the passive. But it was already such a unique unit in the, you know, different transformations for the 12k super and the 18k super. So, I don't mind it too much. And they are really really powerful now so a good extreme Z awakening in my opinion so uh that is the lr goten and trunks the mighty mask let me know in the comments what you guys think about them but let's quickly go over the five other units before we get out of here so now we got the tech vegeto so pre-extreme Z awakening leader skill is all types hp and attack plus 30 percent super attack supreme damage and allies attack plus 25 percent for one turn and passive is attack and defense plus 30 percent for all allies. Now with the Extreme Z Awakening, leader skill becomes all types Q plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 80%, uh, super attack supreme damage and allies attack and defense plus 30% for one turn, and then attack uh, and then passive is attack and defense plus 150% plus an additional defense plus 15% for every key sphere obtained, chance of evading enemies attacks including super attacks plus 5% with each attack received up to 30%. All allies attack and defense plus 30% and then launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack. So still a great support unit but now he actually gets some attack and defense for himself and also up to a 30% chance to dodge after uh, receiving 6 attacks. And he also has a chance to launch 2 supers, possibly a 3rd super with the hidden potential system. But uh, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, this super attack is really, really good. Imagine if they get like double supers, that's going to be, you know, 30% attack and defense twice for the entire rotation on top of their support passive. So um, it's a great Extreme Z Awakening overall, in my opinion. I mean, if you compare it to what this guy did before, uh, it wasn't a lot, right? So definitely a huge upgrade for the Tech Vegito. And same thing for the Int Vegito, it's actually a very similar EZA. Leader skill is all types, HP and attack plus 30%, of course this is before the EZA. Super attack supreme damage, allies attack plus 25% for one turn, and passive is attack plus 12% for every key sphere obtained. With the Extreme Z Awakening, leader skill all types, key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 80%, super attack supreme damage, allies attack and defense plus 30% for one turn, and passive is attack and defense plus 150% plus an additional attack plus 20% for every key sphere obtained. Chance of performing a critical hit plus 5% with each attack performed up to 30%. Uh, all allies key plus 3 launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack. So compared to the Tech Vegito, um, this guy's going to be much more offensively driven. Whereas the Tech Vegito is much more defensive with the dodge chance and the extra defense for every key. This guy is going to be, you know, much better offensively, but not as good defensively. But both are 
very good units, nonetheless. And then we have the uh, Tech Super Boo. So pre-extreme Z Awakening, Tech Type Q plus 3, Attack and Defense plus 50%, Super Attack Supreme Damage with a rare chance to stun, and Passive is recovers 30% of damage dealt as health. Now for the uh, Extreme Z Awakening, Leader Skill is Tech Type Q plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 100%, Super Attack raises attack for one turn and causes Supreme Damage with a medium chance to stun, and then the passive is defense plus 130% at the start of turn, medium chance of evading enemies attacks including super attacks, and medium chance to perform a critical hit. Recovers 30% of damage dealt as HP. So you might have noticed that they don't actually give him uh, any attack buff on his passive, which I guess is because they didn't want him to heal too much. I mean, if he had like 100% attack, then he'd be healing an insane amount every single time, right? So I guess because of that, because of this part of his passive that they wanted to keep, they didn't give him any attack. I still would have liked to see some attack, but I guess I get it. I guess I understand, but it's still unfortunate. He should hit harder than he does. I mean, even with the Extreme Z Awakening, I don't think he's going to hit that hard. His stats are going to be better. Um but he's primarily going to be a healer. He's going to be really good at that though. He's going to be very, very good at healing. I mean, even if he's doing like a million damage, that's 300,000 HP he's recovering. So, okay, I get it, yeah. He doesn't really need the attack buff, I guess. But there is the tech super boo. And uh, let's move on to the int Vegeta. Leader skill is int and fist types, key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 30%. Uh, supreme damage and raises attack for three turns and passive is attack plus 20% per int key sphere obtained recovers HP with candy now with the extreme Z awakening leader skill becomes int and fist types key plus three HP attack and defense plus 90% uh, super attack causes supreme damage and raises attack and defense for three turns and then passive is attack and defense plus 120% attack plus 30% and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained that's crazy. I mean, he's already getting 120%, and then 30% attack, 20% defense for every key sphere. A chance to evade enemy attacks plus 10%, up to 30% at the start of each turn, and then changes tech key spheres to int key spheres when there's an ally whose name includes Goku. Attacking in the same turn recovers HP with candy. So he is an orb changer if you have a Goku uh, on the same rotation, and then 30% attack and 20% defense for every key sphere. I mean, that's just crazy. That's just ridiculous. And then he also gets a 30% chance to dodge, which is nice. Um, but man, that's just so much attack and defense for every key sphere on top of the flat, I mean, not flat, but like the base boost he's already getting. Um, he's gonna be a very good nuker. Very, very good nuker. And same thing for this Goku. They're actually built very similar. So pre-extreme Z Awakening, uh, leader skill is AGL and SDR types, key plus 3, HP attack and events plus 30%, super attack supreme damage, and attack plus 20% for all allies for one turn, and passive is attack plus 20% per SDR key sphere obtained, recovers HP with candy. Now with the extreme Z Awakening, leader skill is AGL and SDR types, key plus 3, HP attack and events plus 90%, super attack, supreme damage, and uh, attack plus 30% for all allies for two turns. And then passive is attack and defense plus 120%, attack plus 20%, or sorry, attack plus 30%, and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained. Chance to perform a critical hit plus 10%, up to 30% at the start of each turn. And then changes Fizz key spheres to STR key spheres when there's an ally whose name includes Goku. My bad. Uh, whose name includes Vegeta. Uh, attacking the same turn, recovers HP with candy. So essentially the same passive as Vegeta except uh, a different type of key sphere. Not also you need Vegeta as opposed to Goku or Vegeta, right? So um, there you go, guys. Those are all six Extreme Z Awakenings outside of the Fusions Extreme Z Awakenings that are dropping on JP soon. Um, they all look very good, uh, especially the Goku and Vegeta. The Super Buu is interesting just because he's not going to hit that hard. He's not going to hit that hard but he's gonna be insanely insanely good for one purpose which is healing he's gonna be i mean as long as you can do damage right he's gonna be healing 
a crazy amount every single time he supers and that boo team is already healing all the time right so if you add this guy to that team um it's really gonna be unkillable like that that uh, majin power team is kind of immortal unless like one super takes you out but as long as you stay alive you're gonna be healing like back to full almost every single turn and this guy just makes that even easier right so yeah very interesting extreme z awakening there and then the vegetos look awesome especially this guy i think for the support and uh yeah the agl lr oten and trunks the mighty mask is a little bit basic in terms of their passive but it's still very solid it's still very good they're gonna hit stupidly hard and uh, get some good defense just not in the first slot yeah don't uh, put them in the first slot if there's a if there, if there are a lot of attacks before they get a chance to super but uh otherwise i have no issues with this extreme z awakening um there you go guys that is today's video hope you guys enjoyed it as always if you liked the video then make sure to like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.